Welcome and thank you for joining us for our second half hour, The Factor Uncensored. Now, this is sad to see a life unnecessarily taken and lost. Viral video from North Carolina shows 38 year old Jonathan Adam LeCompte trying to do a good deed and stop Ricky Alex Driggers from stealing a road crew vehicle. Not only was LeCompte unable to follow through with stopping the carjacking, he lost his life. My next guest shares whether or not it's a good idea to step in if you witness this kind of situation. And joining us on the Factor on Center tonight, Greg Dupree with TLAC Now. Greg, this video out of North Carolina is wild, mind-blowing. A yes, man sir. attempts to stop a carjacker shoots into the car, the carjacker gets away, but then comes back and hits and kills the Good Samaritan who is trying to stop him from, from stealing that vehicle. Your thoughts on this? How did we get here? Well, uh, you know, as I looked at that, it, 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 obviously it's a very tragic situation, but I mean, there was so many, uh, this could have been easily avoided. Uh, in so many ways. When I looked at the video and saw it first, I thought this guy, evidently, he had on a vest. He was part of this work crew. And this was the truck that was attempted, well, that was stolen. I, I don't know if it was his work truck or it belonged to some city or state county government, but it wasn't worth his life. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I'm curious as to how this guy had a gun with him at work. You know, they might allow that on his job, but the manner in which he used it, I didn't see, I really did, did not see a reason for him to pull out the gun and on top of that start firing at the, 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 the car thief because I didn't see anybody's life in danger, anybody's life in jeopardy. Now, it's one thing to uh, protect the life of someone else or yourself, but it's something entirely different, protecting some property that more than likely wasn't his. Yeah, and, and likely and, insured because it's owned by some type of entity and not an individual. Exactly. And, you know, it's, I, I don't understand at how close, how, well, well I, I take that back. I was about to say, I don't see how at such a close range he could have missed the guy. It yeah, didn't he fired multiple times, and I'm like, well, is the guy, the carjacker, is he dead? Is he alive? But he was still driving the vehicle. Exactly. And, and you know, let this be a lesson to anyone that has a firearm in their home or whether they carry it or not. Spend as much time at the range as possible. Mm -hmm. because this is how quickly something like this can happen, and you want to be as accurate with your shots as possible. You know, and let's just say for the sake of argument that he had neutralized the carjacking suspect. I think, depending on well, I know in Texas, he would have probably been in trouble because uh, there was no one in danger when he fired him. You know, I know in uh, certain circumstances to protect property, particularly at night in your vehicle, you can use deadly force. But in a situation like this, I didn't see what deadly force was justified, unless it was something else that went on prior to what we saw in the video. And he's been labeled a good Samaritan trying to stop a carjacking. But many of us know at some point we have to assess the situation is it worth putting our lives in danger if no one else's life is in danger and the person is stealing a vehicle exactly and well and and this is something else you have to consider you saw the guy once he backed up you saw he was coming to run you down now is the perfect time to start using deadly force mm -hmm. but he didn't even make an effort to raise his weapon and fire on the guy Mm -hmm. You know, so it was, as I said, it's a tragic situation, but I, it, it was senseless. That's the best way I can describe it. It was senseless all the way around. Obviously, prayers to his family. You know, yes. a tough situation they're going in through, going through now as a result of this. Do you think sometimes, uh, you know, we get overzealous, some of us, when we have a firearm on us and we say, well, now it's time for me to take action? I, I definitely believe there are individuals who are legally carrying weapons that can are are waiting for an opportunity to break out their firearm and use it. The thing is, I caution against that. You know, you you should always remember that when you're carrying a weapon, particularly concealed, you are the one with the element of surprise. Mm -hmm. So you have those extra seconds or those extra moments to think through the situation and say, what is the best way for me to respond in this situation? Is somebody's life in danger? You know, is my life in danger? And if not, if it doesn't meet those two cri criteria, I'd really think about uh, or reconsider using a firearm in the first place.
And when you're getting that firearm and, and you're carrying your firearm in public, uh, I, I would suggest it would be important to learn the law it and definitely. how, you know, definitely. pulling out that gun and, and using it could impact you. You know, exactly. how can you do it uh, legally without exactly. putting yourself in jeopardy or at risk in the judicial system? Exactly. And that, not just criminally, but civilly as well. And right. I'm going to tell you something. In today's litigious society, I would not be surprised one bit to see if this suspect sues that guy's family. I wouldn't be surprised either. But a tragic situation. Tragic situation. One person is dead. Obviously, he was the one who was hit by the truck. Right, right. Greg Dupree, always good to see you here on The Factor Uncensored. We appreciate your time tonight, sir.